In this video, we'll walk through how to make a book layout template in Adobe InDesign. We'll look at some process, some important terms, and more. Before we dig in, if you're looking for some extra help, you can download thousands of InDesign templates over on Envato Elements. With unlimited access, you can download as much content as you want. It's all included. Check out the description for more info. So let's begin with some book design basics you should know. First, let's talk about what margins are. Think about them like the space around your page. And you might be wondering, why do I need margins at all? Well, take a look at this example. Without any margins, this body copy is overwhelming. Not only that, but we could lose some of the content in the fold when the paper is trimmed. Instead, give your body copy some breathing room, like this other example. That said, let's talk about the gutter. That's the space between two pages in a two-page spread. So why would this be different from your margins? Well, grab a book, open it up, and take a look at the middle. You'll notice you lose some of the page in the middle due to the book's binding. This is why we need extra space here, to accommodate this. Now, let's talk about bleed. The bleed is a work area that's going to be trimmed off. So what's the point then? Well, if you want an image to be full bleed, or to go right up against the edge of your page, you're going to need a bleed here. This way, when the paper is trimmed, you have a seamless full page image. Let's also discuss leading or line spacing. Just like we were talking about with margins, space is very important. Here's three examples. On the left, the text is really cramped. It's not very comfortable to read like this. On the right, we have so much space that the lines are starting to look independent rather than fluid. In the middle, we have a happy medium, and that's the key here, finding a balance that reads comfortably. Now let's take these concepts and create a template in InDesign. Start by creating a new document. We'll choose a height and width. I'm going to work with 6 inches by 9 inches for this example. We can also choose our orientation here if we'd like to swap these dimensions. We can also choose how many pages we start with, as well as if we'd like facing spreads. We'll use spreads in this demonstration. We can also choose which page number we'd like to start with, and I'm going to toggle primary text frames on. This will help make our text flow from frame to frame when we start designing our book. We can also add columns here if we'd like, but let's jump down here to our margins. I'm going to set those to 0.75 inches on all sides. We can toggle this link icon on and off to keep those measurements consistent or independent on each side. Then we have our bleed and slug. So we've already talked about what bleed is, and your printer may have specific recommendations to note here. The slug is content located outside of your document, often used for print information. We won't use that here in this demo. Keep in mind that all of these values can be changed after you create your document as well. That's located under File, Document Setup for your reference. Now let's click Create to make our document. We'll begin by opening up our Pages panel. Go to Window, Pages, and here's what the Pages panel looks like. Master pages are an awesome tool that you're going to want to take advantage of. Think of them like a format template or a set of rules to apply to your active pages. So our master pages are located here at the top of our pages panel. I can click and drag to adjust how much of that is visible here in the panel too. We have one master here called A Master, so let's double click to edit this master page. You'll notice that InDesign already placed two text boxes here for us, one on each page, taking up the entire column. This little icon here on this text box tells us that it's a primary text frame. This is where we'll put our body copy a little later. First, let's just start out by putting down some page numbers. Select the Type tool and click and drag to create a new text box at the bottom of the page. It doesn't have to be perfect because we can edit it anytime we want. Then with our text box selected, let's go to Type, Insert Special Character, Markers, Current Page Number. You'll notice that InDesign inserted an A here, which indicates it's a page number here on Master A. I'm going to align my page number to the center. Let's turn to the Paragraph panel by going to Window, Type in Tables, Paragraph. Then I can choose the alignment I like in this panel and adjust the placement here with the Selection tool. Let's copy this and make the opposite page have the same page number. Just copy, paste, and use the selection tool to position our copied page number. Let's make some changes to our gutter here. Remember, the gutter is the space between our spreads to accommodate the fold. 
Let's go to File, Document Setup. I'll add some extra space on the bottom for my page numbers and some extra space between my pages for that gutter. So we've got our basic setup here, but let's say we want the first page of each chapter to look different. Let's right click on PC or control click on Mac here on our A master and select Duplicate Spread. Now we have a new master page called B master. Let's go into B master and make some changes. First, I don't want the primary text frame here on the left at all, so let's just select that and delete it. Then let's select the primary text frame on the right and resize it. I'd like the body copy to start further down the page. I'll also use the type tool to add some new text here. Let's start with a text box again and then open up our character panel. We can find that via Window, Type in Tables, Character. We can change things like the font and size here. So here's what my first page is going to look like every time a new chapter begins. Now let's take what we've created and test it out. Go back to your active pages. I can click here on my first page here in my Pages panel to get there. For this demo, I'm going to use 15 paragraphs of Laura Mipsum. This is placeholder text that you can easily grab online. All I need to do is paste my text into the primary text frame here on my active page. And check it out, InDesign made new pages for me to accommodate the length of my text. Now, all my pages are using A master. I need B master here on my first page because it's the start of the chapter. So all I need to do is drag B master here to my first page. And there you go, the start of our chapter now has the appropriate design. So this is a really basic example. Let's have some fun with these concepts to show you some of the possibilities. First thing I'm going to do is duplicate A master again, same as before. So now we have C master here now. Let's make the footer a little more interesting. I'll move the page number to the side. I'll also add a thin line using the line tool. We can adjust the stroke here with the stroke panel via window, stroke. We can also add other content to the footer too. Here's a look at what I came up with, but there's no wrong answer here. Have fun with it. Now we could use this as the basis for our book, but let's try something a little more whimsical. I thought, how about rainbow pages? Why not? So check it out. I took C master here and made all the content on the left red and then the content on the right orange. I'll duplicate this spread and then it gives me D master. In D master, I went yellow and green. Then you guessed it, another duplicate, this time purple and blue. I thought it might be fun too to add some graphical elements. I'm going to use these watercolor hearts from Envato Elements. Check out the description below to download them. We'll just go to File, Place, and then select the image from your computer just as you would with any normal image placement in InDesign. Here's a look at the hearts I added to the footer of my pages. Let's add some things to our B master here too. Here's a look at an idea you could try. I just arranged some of those watercolor hearts and made my first page here orange because I want the rainbow to restart with each chapter. So let's put this to use. It's as simple as dragging our master pages to our active pages. And now our repeating design elements change color from page to page. Keep in mind that you can go back and tweak your design anytime you want. Just edit the master pages. Let's wrap up by talking about what InDesign books and InDesign templates are, because this can be pretty important for book design. When you save your work, you'll typically save as an INDD or InDesign document file. You can, however, save as an INDT or InDesign template. This basically means that you can open a new document based on your template document. Open Normal will create that new document based on your template, and Open Original will open the template itself, so you can edit it. It's pretty handy. An InDesign book is different, but still very useful. Let's create one by going to File, New, Book. Note that this doesn't open a new document. Instead, we see the book panel here. Basically, we could have each chapter of our book here as its own file, collected together in this book. This makes navigating, organizing, and editing chapters way easier because it's not one huge file. And that's it. We've taken a look at creating an InDesign book template. There's plenty of things you could do with these concepts, and I hope you enjoy using them. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to our channel. You can also click the notification bell so you never miss an update. 
Thanks for watching.